Hey guys, just want to do a quick overview of the Instance Scatter, Instance Painter tool. We have part of the Terrain Editor palette now and for internal use. Uh, let's do a quick demonstration of how this thing actually works and looks. And just... Ah, objects everywhere. Whoosh. Great. Pretty much every Instance Painter in the world. Okay, unlock. I'm going to delete all of these and go through the process uh, from, from scratch, just from a completely blank palette, so we see all the steps involved and all the different parameters you can control. In the terrain editor, go to paint instances. Okay, and the first thing is that uh, you notice we generated quite a number of objects, and we don't really want those just sitting over here pretty much anywhere. So the first thing we have to do is, is specify an instance parent. Parentheses is important. It's very important. So in this case, we have a blank game object called final instances, which is you know obviously associated with final or terrain. These would just need to be something you know obvious if you're looking at it uh, in the scene file. Uh, when you click on this to specify the game object to use as the parent, it's going to open in assets and be very confusing. Just click on scene and then go to final instances, and there you go. We have up to four instances that we can paint with every time it generates. Uh, you know, as you drag the mouse around, it's going to try and generate stuff. It's going to pick from these four randomly. We could also do a round robin, but in this case, it's, it's just random. So I'm going to set these to four little debug objects. You may recognize from such previous works as other junk. Uh, we have the brush radius, which defaults to 5 meters and extends up to 100 meters. Um, I was thinking, you know, for we obviously might have trees that are enormous, in which case having like a 20 meter brush isn't really going to help very much. So we're going to have this 100 meter brush. Probably leave this at a 10 or something for now. Instance density, which is done in seconds per instance. Uh, higher means less output. So basically we're going to leave this all the way to the left for now, which is very fast uh, instance painting. But you can set it up a little bit higher to have it slow down and give you a bit more precise control of the way you're paste, uh, putting things. Uh, scale minimum and scale jitter, this is basically saying what is the relative to one, one being 100% of the object's default size in the prefab. It's going to start at this small value, the scale minimum, and then be scaled by that amount plus some random percentage of the scale jitter amount. So in this case it's really going to go from 75% to 125%, which is 75 plus 50, you know, all right, pretty basic. Same thing down here for the rotation base. We have all three axes are available, though we probably only, by default, it only lets you rotate on Y. And if you're painting a forest of trees or whatever, that's pretty much what you want to do. Um, so no, no jitter by default on X and Z, but we do have a full 360 degrees worth of jitter on Y. Same setup where you can specify the base and the amount of jitter, which is going to be positive away from that base. Um, if you need more control over that, you know, obviously we can modify it. Uh, we have an instance layer, which we don't really have any layer set up, so for now it's going to paint to default, but just know that you can click on this palette and paint to whatever you want, although if you forget to do this, it's no big deal, because as long as you have a parent, you can always assign everything an instance layer through the parent, so pretty easy. And then, because it's not especially useful to just sandblast trees all over creation, uh, we also have these vertex color channel, you know, ignore or lockout. And this is pretty much the same as they were on the... Uh, on the terrain vertex painter where if you look at our underlying vertex colors here we have blue for this kind of stone pathway and red for this rock texture uh, we can just force this to ignore those and there are some rules about you know how much red has to be present before it cuts it off and there's a little bit of a random slope on its way in there but it does cut off at a certain point so as to not you know be too obnoxious like this area in here which isn't all that red although it looks it um, is actually, you can see it, it's pretty green, so does it really want to plant trees there or not? Well, that's all kind of a break-even rule, and it's set a certain way. Again, if it needs to be modified, we can change it. And uh, so that's pretty much it. And what we're going to do is we're going to do another round here, where we, um, I'll leave these settings pretty much as they are. So like this, I'm actually going to turn red and blue off, though. Lock object for painting. And... There we go. Now you'll notice not painting at all on the rocks or on these uh, paths over here. Might be able to kind of trick it into painting one in here. It doesn't look like it's interested now. All right. So there you go. There's painting and ignoring this stuff and being very gentle. We can also, uh, you know, look at some of these scales. So we can set the scale minimum up to, let's say, one, the jitter of very high. So now it's going to make these huge, enormous versions of everything. Great. We can also, you know, easily kill rotation, just set this off, and actually for this test, I'm going uh, to try not to blow my computer up in the middle of recording this. And now a little, no rotation on the objects. So very easy to use, very intuitive. And the performance seems pretty good, like, I mean, this, this seems pretty fast. Um, although I haven't tested it on extremely large objects, uh, 
or you know for an hour and a half we're just painting tens of thousands of trees or um, you know oil refineries and air case and giant beach balls so that is I think that's everything all of the parameters uh, it doesn't have any brush fall off so it's basically a completely uniform random distribution within the radius which seems fine for what we're trying to do here. Um, and there's no, it doesn't follow slope. So if you're painting something on the terrain, it's not going to follow the surface normal. If you want to add a property for that, let me know, I can add that. And that should be it. I always have to have a fake ending to these things because it snarfs the audio for some reason. It's variable between two to five seconds, so snarf.